Here on Garfield Avenue in Dubuque is some of the worst damage from yesterday's storms. Everywhere you look, there's tree limbs. A tree is even uprooted onto a home. It's been a busy Labor Day here. In fact, people said yesterday's storm was like a scene out of a movie. It was a mess down here. This is like a disaster zone. Trees are torn apart, scattered on the street, or in this case, uprooted on top of a home, all from the winds ripping through Dubuque yesterday. Kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Everything you've been flying right past the window. Pretty scary. One of those items, this American flag, now twisted up high in a tree. You know, the POW flag and the American flag are both together, and now they're yeah. both up in the tree. And that tree is standing, but the one to the left of it is all twisted, uprooted. It looks like there was a tree branch on a car down there. This Labor Day, not exactly a relaxing one, with the city's annual parade and picnic canceled. It's better to be safe than sorry. Mark Cook is one of this year's organizers. He believes this is one of the first times in 30 years the parade had to be canceled. We didn't want the people standing on the parade route getting soaked or the people in the parade getting soaked. So, mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a really big parade here in Dubuque where it's pretty much all the city involved. Instead, it's neighbors helping neighbors on Garfield Avenue as the storm cleanup continues. In Dubuque, Lauren Moss, News 7, KWWL. And Ron, it's a completely different scene here now than it was this morning. It's quiet, a somber night here on campus as this tragic news sets in. The school's mourning the loss of someone who is described as a dedicated employee who's worked as a steam fitter here for the past 10 years. Multiple fire trucks, police cars, and first responders surround a dining hall on UNI's campus. Inside, a major steam leak, tragically killing employee Kevin Bly. Here's a look from outside the building, showing steam rising into the air. School officials say Bly was working to fix a previous leak that occurred last week. On September 4th, we had a incident where there was a steam leak that took place in Rialto Dining Services. That steam leak set off, uh, in essence, our fire systems uh, and our fire warning systems. Uh, that leak happened in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Since then, the dining hall had been closed for all students, but we're told Bly was in the steam distribution system tunnel, testing it out when it leaked once again. We had an individual that was within the vicinity of another steam leak. It appears Bly was the only employee inside that tunnel with no other injuries reported. Now the dining hall remains closed, but you could see it's connected to a dorm where students are seen coming and going. Tonight we're told those students are safe. And we're told this steam leak only affected this dining area right here behind me. For the past couple of days, students have been going to another facility here on campus. Live in Cedar Falls, Lauren Moss, News 7, KWWL. Lauren Moss joins us here in the studio with a refresher. And Abby, year after year, we've seen the viral videos from all around the country showing a child getting off their bus only to have a car go whizzing by, barely missing them. And that should never happen, of course. Tonight, we're breaking down the rules, when to stop, when to slow down, all to make 2018 a safe school year in the state of Iowa. Stop and listen up. Thankfully, this semi-noticed the school bus signs, but would you? Trooper Dave Gorm says pay attention to the flashing lights, both yellow and red, just like a street light. They cannot pass the school bus with the flashing yellow lights going. And when the stop arm actually does come out and the red lights come on, uh, they have to stop at least 15 feet behind that school bus. Even with the stop arm down, time and time again, dash cam video catches drivers speeding by. Oh, there's no one. Last year, the Iowa State Patrol reported 285 accidents involving school buses. It's terrifying. You don't want to see a kid hit. Creating not only a dangerous situation, but also a pretty costly one as well, as a serious violation. The fine amount is anywhere from $250 to $675. And upon conviction, you'll lose your license for 30 days. It's not only troopers keeping an eye out on the road. A majority of school buses have cameras like this one here, which can catch your license plate number. Last year, the State Patrol investigated uh, 80 school bus violations. That's just our department. So when in doubt, err on the side of caution and just always stop. All to help make the 2018 school season safer for all drivers and students. 
And Ron, it's a big deal for a big, big project. It means that this project is on track to be finished by the end of October already. Now, this building behind me, it's a landmark in the city of Dubuque, a former church turned event center. And add in this extra funding, and that means some extra upgrades. Take a look. Here's the former church, and here's the steeple. Well, it's covered in scaffolding, but if you look closely, you can see parts of the new copper finish going over it. I drove by just last week, and with the sun shining on it for the first time, saw it fully illuminated, and it was a, a wow moment for me, very much so. Open the doors, and you don't see any people, but what you do see is the rich history this building holds. It was the, the parish for the first generation of German immigrants uh, to, this, to this area. Here's a crew member going upstairs, a place for more than just prayers. Up 210 feet as stained glass, the clock, and the old church bells are being restored. Back on the ground, it's proof that Judy Wolf and historian Dwayne Haggerty's hard work has paid off. It all started when they got a challenge grant from the Jeffries Family Foundation, who worked to revitalize historic buildings in the Midwest. We had to come up with $1.2 million in a match to um, to get that 600000 So we spent the last two years raising that $1.2 million. They had three years to meet their goal. Steeple Square did it in two. Just very enthused about being able to know that that um, portion of funding is secured. It really is gratifying to know that this project has really such great community support. And this building is just one part of an overall $15 million project, including three other buildings in this neighborhood. Housing and a child care center are also in the works. Live in Dubuque, Lauren Moss, News 7, KWWL.